Hi folks, the next program for Just Outdoors is early perch fishing, early season perch fishing, uh, shallow ice, and we're going to show you a couple of different methods of fishing perch in the early part of the season. We're going to go right out on the lake and with a couple of fishermen and we're going to interview them and we're going to talk about all the different lures that you can use and just exactly how you can have the best day perch fishing with thin ice. Just Outdoors is brought to you in part by Jervelin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervelin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervelin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Hi, my name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors, ICTV, Grand Rapids, Itasca County. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, the water, and the wildlife of Itasca County. And today, wildlife, we're gonna talk about fish. And the program is gonna be about early ice in perch fishing, early ice fishing in the late fall where the ice is uh, not as thick as in the middle of the winter. It just formed here a couple weeks ago. And sometimes, and most of the time, the perch are really active at the, at, at, in the early part of the season. And so we're out here in, in the middle of November. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, about 30 degrees. It's uh, coming toward the end of the fall and pretty soon it'll be winter. And yet it's just a beautiful, gorgeous day out here. Very little wind. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into a small lake, about 600 acres or so, uh, very remote. It's in the middle of the Chippewa National Forest. And it has proven to be a very, very good perch lake. And we've got a couple uh, gentlemen that are in there right now fishing. And we're going to check them out and have them talk to us about how they catch fish, the type of equipment they use, and a lot of other things that you might not know about perch fishing. You know, the perch is one of the better eater fish uh, right now. Uh, it's, it always has been. Uh, 50 years ago, they'd throw them back. But now it's, uh, it's almost a delicacy. It's just like walleye to some people. So if you catch your limit of 20 perch, you've got about four meals right there. And uh, it's, it's something that is getting more and more popular uh, in the area here at this time of year. And so we're going to take a look and, and see what uh, perch fishing is all about on a remote lake in the Chippewa National Forest in Itasca County. And on the way in, we're gonna show you a little bit about the road going in and uh, how beautiful it is up in this area. Okay, folks, as we're uh, approaching the lake, we got about a three mile drive here on a federal forest road. And uh, this federal forest road is uh, going through a lot of uh, red pine and very mature red pine. They had harvested uh, about half the red pine in here a couple years ago. And uh, now the undergrowth is starting to come up, which will produce more habitat for grouse and deer. Otherwise, uh, the forest becomes so mature, it just doesn't support a lot of wildlife, particularly deer. So as we go on and as we continue down this road, we're getting deeper into the Chippewa National Forest and, and we're gonna have a lot of fun out here. We're gonna watch uh, people catch a lot of fish. And this fishing doesn't go on all year, again. We're going in where the ice is only six to eight inches deep here, or thick, and we're going to be fishing the deepest part of the lake, which uh, at this time of the year and most of the year, panfish, that's where they hang out. And if there's panfish hanging out there, there's going to be northern pike hanging out. 
So a lot of the times when uh, we're fishing perch, we're catching northern pike also because the northerns are hanging around the forage fish, which is the perch in this lake. Okay, folks, uh, we have arrived at the lake. Um, it, it looks like when I look out on the lake, it's uh, pretty much total ice. All the snow that has fallen the day before has, has melted. It's very, very black and dark out there. And you always assume it's gonna be slippery. And, and some of the best things you can put on your feet, actually all year when you're out on the lake fishing, even when there's a lot of snow, is some cleats. And you can buy these, all different kinds of these, but boy, they, uh, they fit right over almost every boot. This is a very large boot, and so I bought an extra, extra large one of these. It slips on pretty easy and they don't come off. So I'll just throw you, I'll just show you how easy they are to put on. They don't take a lot of time. And uh, once you got them on there, you feel a little more secure, but you can't feel totally secure because you still have to walk pretty much vertical. You can still slip on these but they do go on fairly easy and pull that tight pull this tight and we're ready to go good solid cleats on there that can save a lot of broken bones and a lot of misery but you still got to remember that it's still going to be slippery even with these out here so as you're walking make sure you you know that you got to stay upright especially if you're pulling something because you forget about it. So, here we are, we're gonna head out on the lake and as we're going on the lake, we're gonna look for, it's pretty foggy out here, we'll see if we can find the other two gentlemen that are fishing out there and we're gonna approach them and see how they're doing. Well, here we are on the lake and uh, boy, it's black out here because all the snow has melted, but it's, it's kind of interesting, a lot of ice, uh, plenty safe to walk. I wouldn't try an ATV or anything like that, but uh, give that a week or so. But there's our boys out there uh, fishing, and uh, we'll just kind of walk out slowly and gingerly here to just to see how they're doing. Okay, hey, folks, we've arrived here uh, where uh, our two fishermen are set up, and we will introduce them later. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, you can fish with anything out here, pretty much if you catch perch. But there are some lures that work better than others, and it's up to you to decide that yourself. Uh, with experience and time, uh, you'll come up with that. But just to show you just a, an array of just a few of the lures that you can purchase and that you can use, and the difference in them are uh, some are treble hooked, like these, and some you have a single hook. And of course the treble hooks, the spoons, are uh, lures are run from large. Uh, this is what they call a slender, slender jig, and they come down and you can get a smaller one, a slender jig. And then you can go to the Swedish pimples here, which are very effective. Those have the three, the treble hooks. And there's just, a, just an array. This is just an example of some of the f things that you can get to fish perch. And of course, a lot of these things will work on crappies too, with panfish. But we're out here early in the season. There's only about six inches of ice. And so uh, the fish are very active. Most of the fish that we're catching here that you're gonna be seen caught are females. Uh, for some reason, you just don't get a lot of males this time of the year. And of course, there's, uh, there's the fun of fishing right there. So. This is just an example and we'll look and see how, what these guys are using. And then toward the end of the show, we're gonna take a couple of these lures, pinch off the barbs on the hooks and see how effective we are with barbless fishing for perch. Okay, we're here with Larry. He's gonna be our first person that we're gonna be interviewing here, fishing perch. And he's been out here before, he's been very successful. He's already, looks like he's got a few on the ice here. Six, six perch on the ice right here. We'll be showing those later. Um, doesn't take long, Larry, to get a limit out here, does it? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. No. When they're biting? Yeah, pretty, pretty quick. Pretty quick. Okay. Um, and you used uh, an ion here to uh, cut your hole, electric? Yes. Would you ever go back to gas or? Hard to say, huh? 
you know, these start every time. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. As long as you got the battery all charged up, yeah. and yeah. you can, uh, with ice this stick, you can probably cut 50 holes, huh? Yes. Something like that, yeah. Well, anyway, it's, it's a very compact outfit. It isn't real heavy, but yeah, that's a good choice, I guess, for uh, pan fishing. Um, yeah, almost about half the people that I, I seem like I see are, are fishing with electric now, so. For cutting lots of holes, uh, works really good in thin ice like we've got the yeah. uh, six, eight, 10 inches. Uh, goes through 24 inches of ice and I can cut 15, 20 holes. Pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to, uh, is, do you want to demonstrate that just quick? Right back here? Right here? Yeah, sure. Turn around and face the camera there. All right. Yeah, just yes. uh, face go ahead. It. Yep. Give me the button. Go ahead, go. Not right. bad. Nice thing about this, it also has reverse. So I can push the ice down the hole. Yeah. Not all of them have reverse. No, this um, one does. And the one that was reverse, I see, is a lot easier to get out of the, especially deeper ice. So, on. so do you know how much ice you got at all? Have you measured it at all? I have not. You know? But I have a scoop right here with some marks on it that I carry. Well, and I also have a uh, tape measure just to see what we got here. And I've measured from the edge yep. up. Okay. So I slide it down right about there. And you measure from here, right? Right. To here? About seven inches. A little over seven. Seven and a quarter. Perfect. Safe. Good to go. You could probably bring an ATV out, but I would say, well, wait a wait another week of cold weather. It was so easy walking. Yeah, walking today. So all right, let's get back to the fishing. We got that down. Now, um, it's you, you select your fish. I mean, you can catch small fish and medium and big, and there's nothing wrong with, with keeping fish, and there's one on there right now. You didn't have that down very long. Let's take a look and see what you got there. Kind of small. It's a little small. That's probably going to go back. Uh, oh, let's, yeah. Let's just measure that just to see uh, what we got. Um, not every fish you're going to catch here is a monster, but it's it's not going to be hard to go back with the uh, uh, four meals of fish. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. No, you're going to. I'm going to try and carefully get this out without hurting the fish. Okay. Whoop. Oh, we'll measure sorry. the next one. I'll he was too what. small. Let's measure one of these since you got one sitting here. Hold on to that. Just to see kind of what they're, this is kind of what you're keeping, right? Yeah. It's uh, 10 inches. Not a nice bad, fish. Yeah, fish, and that's about what you're keeping. Uh, nine and a half, uh, it's probably looks like about the minimum here. So, okay, let's see what you're using for a bait. You're using a crappie minnow, I guess. Well, a, chub, a little bigger chub. than a crappie minnow. Okay, what are you using for lure? I have. Hold that right up so he can get that right down in there. Okay. I think it's called a mimic menno because mimic. it has a little tail here. Okay, and that? That flops around and with a treble, a treble hook. Treble hook. And it's got a little bit of a angle to it, so when you yeah. jig it up, it kind of flutters down a little bit. And it's heavier than some, right? Y Yes. And it's got the little weight so you can get her down. It there goes down quick. fairly fast. Because when you're when you're dealing 16 feet of water, it takes a while to get a lighter lure down there. Yes. And I've seen that with uh, uh, sometimes you can fish with a bobber like that, but you got to kind of put a, a little weight above the lure yeah. to get it down there a little bit. But do you fish with bobbers at all? At all? I mean, you don't. I I will fish with a bobber periodically. Okay. Um, especially if it's really cold, <laughs> and yeah. I don't wall my hands out like yeah. this. Okay. Um, so now what are you going to do? I'm going to hook this right through the head so that it's on okay. one of the trebles. Now you're going to use the whole minnow. I am not going to use the whole oh. minnow. Okay. 
I'm going to cut the head off and leave the tail on the ice. Yep. And now I just have... Oh, about a third of the minnow. About a third of the minnow yeah. on the jig. And that which gives them a little more chance to acquire the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then I just let her go down. Uh, right now the p fish seem to be anywhere from the bottom up about six feet off the bottom. Okay. Uh, if they're if they're active, they're in right away. Okay. It seems it doesn't to, take too long. Now it seems to be some schools kind of moving around a little bit. I th okay. think we might have a northern down there chasing them around. That does affect it. Have you found at all if you get a little higher in the water, you get a little bit bigger fish average or not? I've heard that, but <laughs> I I had heard that, but today doesn't seem to be. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's some little bit bigger okay. ones, okay. but. Um, well, while we're waiting for a fish to bite, which normally doesn't take this long. No. Out here, this is a, this is about as long as you're going to go between bites here. Earlier, so 10, I, 15 seconds. Yeah. Earlier, it was they were down there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that uh, that <laughs> that that rod you got there. Now that's not the that's not the longest one I've ever seen for, for fishing. But this is about the shortest rod yeah, that I've yeah. ever seen. Okay. And um, is there a name for that, or it's just a short rod? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's I, it's just a little rod I found. Yeah, you uh, got a good reel and, on the rod, and the the reel seems to work good. I like to sit fairly close to the hole, and if I'm in a fish house, usually there's not a lot of room if you have several people. With the longer rods, which I have one there that's a little bit longer, you're back a little ways. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to sit right here, and that way when I'm reeling the fish up, I can see what's going on in the hole. Sometimes you can see the fish down yeah. there, too, at a certain... Yeah. When, when a northern hits this, <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically I'm just with a you reel You better here. have your uh, drag set good on that yeah. for a northern, because they'll slam that thing pretty good. Yeah. And another thing about a northern is you have no leader on there, so... No. You can't put, if you want to get the northern, then you want to get your little, there's a fish, that didn't take too long. Can you tell the size of the fish a little bit when this, you... This feels a little bigger than that one I threw okay, back that you be, wanted to measure. Oh yes, it, yes it is. There's, yeah, there's no doubt that that's a little bigger. And I should keep that measuring thing out here. Just to see kind of what we got. And out she comes, and boy that's a... Good eating fish, isn't it? That looks like about a nine incher. Okay, let's go from here. And we'll go to there. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. So that's well. that's about the minimum you want to keep. You 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 would hesitate on that a little bit, but you say, hey, yeah. that's what we're catching out here. That's and you're gonna get them bigger. So, so good eating. Oh, they are. And just looking at them and how fat they are, they're probably the female perch. Yes. Most of them. And we haven't figured out why that is, why there's all females in one area, but uh, it's, it, you know, you got another one there. That didn't take long. When they move in. When they move in, it's just automatic. Ooh, that's little a little, guy. little got a bit smaller. This one I'll, I'll send back to grow up and catch next year. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. We want to be sports people out here. And... Uh, you know, even if you catch a small one and it swallows it and you pull the gills out, you're going to have to keep it. Yes. You know, you're not going to throw it back. It's not going to live. Yes. So that's part of your, and that's going to happen. That's why I try and be very careful when I'm removing yeah. the hook so there you that. Go. Yeah. I see you got a Leatherman tool. That helps with this nipper on there. Well, it gives me the knife to cut the minnow in half yep. and uh, yeah. pliers to take it out. And that's what we're going to be using to uh, pinch down the barbs, too. Look, look at that. That didn't. Uh, you weren't even down there a second. No. Or two. That seems a little this, bigger. This now. feels a little bit nicer. Nope, it wasn't oh. much nicer, and I lost it right there I at the hole. I can see it. Yep. Right and well, being, just... being the sportsman I am, I let it take the minnow too. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And you're going to go through the route, do it again. That's no problem. We got want to show folks here, especially the young people out there. If you want to have a ball, 
catching fish. And father, you got these kids that want to catch fish. You got to start them catching fish young. Bring them out perch fishing. And then, you know what happens, Larry? You get them hooked. Yes, you, you do. You get them hooked. And then they go on to other fish later on. Boy, taking a kid out walleye fishing the first time when he's six, seven years old, pretty tough if they don't catch any fish. Yeah. You know, they lose interest pretty quick. Oh, it's a kid. Yeah. You never did that. Course, no, but, no, no. I never lost interest. But it, uh, this, this is something for kids. And, you know, my shows that I have on out, uh, Just Outdoors are really uh, trying to educate some of the younger people on just how important it is to be out on a day like this, middle of November, and here we are, you know, in God's country, really. You don't, you really don't have another human being other than us within five miles of us here. Oh, yeah. And uh, just a wonderful day, windless almost. And you get those kids out and get them catching fish. They don't care what kind of fish it is. They just want to feel the action. And that hasn't stopped. I mean, Pan how old are we? And we still yeah. want to feel the action. Yeah. That's why we're out here, right? <laughs> Panfish, perch. Yeah. That's the best way to start a kid fishing. You better believe it. So uh, you can see that uh, there's not a lot of um, time between action here. There we go. And you got your, your little and, rod there. And <laughs> my baby rod. Baby rod, but you know, that's just another, uh, I can see him down there. Well, he's, now oh, there's a keeper, see? That's, that's, uh, that's nine and a, nine, nine and a half, I'd say. It's nine for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, well, it's up to whatever, you're gonna that's, be out here a while. Well, yeah. we'll keep him. I'm gonna, no, just wait. for the fun of it, I'm gonna try the tail. Okay. You know, you can flay these fish out because they're fat. Uh, uh, it only takes about four fish, eight fillets per person. Yeah. And so you, you're allowed 20 fish per day. You know, if you do the math, that, that's five meals. And so it's, they're very edible, my goodness. And they're thin, they're easy to cook. I mean, they're a little tougher to, to clean. Some fish, now you got another, whoop. Oh, awesome. One but, uh, Still got my bait. But what's nice about that lure, now that you're using that particular one, you know, there's so many you can use here, different ones. I mean, here we go again. Uh, but you're using a medium-sized one in this area here. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's heavy enough where it gets down quick enough. And that's kind of what you want. Now, have you ever used anything this size? For perch. Not for perch. Not for perch. I don't know why they wouldn't work. Because I remember we were out here a while back and we were catching perch on sucker minnows. <laughs> so, <laughs> now there's a small one. Yeah. Now that could be a male. Uh, most of the smaller fish are males. Sometimes they have a little different color to them. But, um, you, you know, you really can't tell until you clean them. Down he goes. And um, the Swedish pimples, right? These right here have been around for years. They're, oh. they're really fantastic. Wonderful. And the reason they are is because they flash. Yeah. But then again, here comes Mr. Northern in too. So, yes, which they is okay. do. You want a little action there? So yeah, all kinds. And they, there's a there's a takeoff on some of those. These are cast masters, and they're the same. They're a little heavier. So now here we go. What do you got? How do you feel that fish? Well, this feels like it could be a keeper. That's probably a keeper. Yep. Now you don't measure every one here. You get pretty good at looking at what you got. You got an idea. Yep. Idea. So. So really, uh, if you kept every fish you caught here, you'd be done fishing in about 15 minutes. Yes. Well, that's no fun. Well, no. <laughs> So, oh. so you can, uh, so you can keep, the, keep the choice ones, the bigger ones, and you know if you're going to be here an hour, you're going to catch um, the larger fish you want to keep anyway within an hour. Yes. So it's good. And I'm going to switch tails. That one came off, so. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the, the head worked. Yep. When the fish are active like they are right now, the tail works. And do it goes a whole minnow. There you go. I, Give it a shot. The whole minnow works too. 
Well, this will be our last fish that you catch here, and I'm going to go over and see Rich, but uh, let's see what you can do here. Wow. Just a whole minnow. I don't know if treble hooks are any better than a single hook. I haven't figured that out yet. What's your opinion on that? No, I, I don't think they are. A single hook, especially with these particular lures that you were using yeah. here, or mm -hmm. these, mm -hmm. the single hook, they seem to work just fine. This is good, yeah. Well, Rich, uh, Rich is going to be using the single hook here, so we'll see how he's doing over there. And then we'll hit a, I want to see you catch another one on this. Well, good luck, because it looks like they went away. <laughs> For what? Five minutes? Yeah, <laughs> or 30 seconds. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just raise, up raise it and up let and it drop down. Flash it a little bit. Mm -hmm. The flash attract them. All right. Well, we'll give it a couple more seconds here. See what you can do. Yeah, he's got fishing. That's what fishing is. Just yeah. waiting around here. Patience. A bit. Patience, yes. Now, you probably, you, you know you got fish looking at this. They're down there yeah, someplace. Yeah, yeah. So, now you're on the bottom, right? You I just, dropped down to the, the bottom, bottom just, to just to see if there's anything. Lay it down there and okay. see if anything would follow it back up. Okay. The little school that I had here probably went over to Ridges. Rich. Yeah, okay. Up, up, up. Got a little tap, huh? I saw one come up and look. There comes another one. There you got him. No, nope. oh, missed so, him. But, but they're, they're down biting. there. They're biting. So. Okay. Well, we shall. Uh... There we go. That's what we're looking for. Whoa, there's a dandy. That's, that's a nice That's going to be your 10 incher right that's... there. That's at least 10. Yep. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yep. Yeah, that's. That's okay. a good meal. Very good. Well, Larry, thank you for showing us your expertise. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, we'll get back to you a little later with the, uh, uh, yeah, pinching off the uh, barb here. But uh, let's go over and see Rich. All right, we were with Rich today, um, this morning. Um, this is our second person we're checking fishing out here to uh, see how he's doing. He's going to have a a little different method of fishing, a few different lures, and um, but first he's going to introduce us to his hummingbird. Uh, is it a locator, Rich, or what is it called? Uh, yes, it's it's a sonar. Sonar thing. Yes. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and explain? Sure. What this is all about. This is actually my unit out of my boat. My old uh, depth finder bellied up finally. So last year I tried this did a little conversion on it. I had to buy a transducer for the ice conditions instead of your lake transducer. It's a Hummingbird Helix 7. Uh, I have it on the 2D sonar right now, so you're, you'll be able to see my lure go down. You'll be able to see fish come up, grab the lure. It's uh, In that view, it's a little different than a, a regular uh, sonar where you got the going around. Uh, this, it's, I can explain it as it, it's happening here in a, in okay. a minute. Okay, why don't you demonstrate with your lure. Okay. Show us what you're really using first. Okay, uh, today so far I've been using a, uh, just a plain pink jig, tungsten jig. It's heavier than lead. Tungsten, that's... And it's really handy for ice fishing and because it goes down about twice as fast as a normal size. It's about like a third heavier, they say, or something? I would say at least a third heavier. A third yeah, heavier. they go down quite well. For the size, for the volume. Mm -hmm. And so far today, I've just been using this tip of the minnow, minnow head, minnow tail. They're quite aggressive today. Uh, they aren't always that aggressive, but today they are again. So I haven't had my line in the water for five minutes, so the school is maybe not quite here, so we'll we'll see. If you can pick it up, I'll get it down there. there. Okay, right there in the middle there. There's my lure right there in the middle. And here comes some fish up there right now. Oh, where's your lure, right? Right, the top one, right top there. One, okay. There, see my... And where's the fish you're talking about? Is that that red line? He came up from the bottom, yep. Oh, right here, and this, this is fish right yep. here. I'll explain, I'll get okay. this guy up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
No, that's what we call a catch and release, the easy way. Okay, my minnows is good enough. Okay. okay, let's zero in here again. Okay, this actually the bottom is just a hair below the red line here. There's a sliver of light there. There's actually fish about a foot covering up the bottom here. Oh. Okay, I'll drop it down slower this time and so you'll be able to. This line right here is the bottom? Yeah, that, that real sliver there. Yes, and, uh, and those are fish? These all are, the way? yeah, these are fish covering it up there. You can't oh, even goodness. see the bottom. Okay, now here comes my. I'll go slower this time. Okay, right there's my jig. I'll move it up and down a little bit. Right there. Here comes a fish up from the bottom already. He's coming way up. Way up. Yeah, you don't have a dog. There, that there far. we go. No. Yeah. And, and he came up and grabbed that. He came up to oh, about the ten, 10 foot down, about halfway, halfway. almost halfway. Now that's a bigger fish. Uh, no, no, no. This one must. Well, they look bigger in the water. Yep. <laughs> they always, uh, they always shrink a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll use that same minnow. Do that a couple more times. That's, sure. Uh, we'll pin that down a little bit. Now, all these marks, that's actually history because it's scrolling. Yes. And that's actually the fish going back down to the bottom, and a couple other ones so heading from back. So here up. over. Is yeah. In time. Yeah, in time is right there on this mark right there. That's this, this mark that's right live here. right there. Okay. Yep. And everything else is history. I'll try it again and I'll get it down about halfway. Okay, there it comes now out of the clutter on top. See that line right there, that red mark? That's the lure. Now pretty soon you'll see some fish come up. And there's one coming up. He's a little farther away. There he's coming into view. See if he'll grab it. There he grabbed it. My line just... Yep. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's it's almost as much fishing as watching the graph. It's that fun. This is a little nicer one. That's a little nicer one here. Yeah. So, have you um, you know you've you've cleaned fish out of here over the last week or so? Uh, no, no, you haven't. Yeah. Last Thursday. Last Thursday. Yep. Yep. Um, am I right in when you're figuring about four fish per person? Yes, that's about right. About right. Yep. For these size fish. Yep. Yeah. And now that you mentioned it, Tom, about cleaning the fish out of here, it was kind of interesting. One of the northerns I kept last week had about an inch and a half crappie in it. And we actually had two in it, and one of the bigger perch had about the same size crappie in it. So the, there's a must be a good uh, hatch of crappies in here this year. Yes. And of course, they're a little more delicate on fishing during the day and, and when there's perch around, uh, a little tougher to catch. That's probably why we haven't caught any here. And possibly they're not in this yeah. hole. They could be in a little bit different spot. It's without exploring more, it, you know. They're pretty selective, aren't they? They can be, they can be. Let's, let's check this out. Let's try pinching down the barb on a single hook. You got a, you got a 16th ounce jig. Yep. And just, Show them how you're going to pinch the barb down. You got it's just a little barb there. Just the flat pliers and, and pinch her down. Give it a good squeeze. Nice and tight, like that. Okay. There she's flat. And you're not going to be able to feel anything on her. It's just a wire. No, it's flat. It's flat. It's flat. Okay. I'll get a minnow Let's, back uh, on there. Get a minnow back on there, or a part of a minnow, or whatever you use there. Okay. And uh, let's uh, let's see uh, what you can do on that. Now it's going to the minnow is going to stay on as is long, probably because of that. We'll, but maybe through the. We'll do a couple head. tries here and see what we got. Yeah. I personally have not fished with yeah. barbless hooks, so this will be a well, little treat for me. In the future, folks, we're going to do a show on fishing northern pike uh, with uh, and big northern pike with barbless hooks and barbless jigs and barbless lures. Um, boy, I'm so sold on it because I do fish in Canada, uh -huh. and uh, the province of Manitoba, you cannot use anything with a barb. And it's just amazing how uh, we ne never lose any fish, uh, very seldom. Yeah, I, I can't say never, but now well, what happened there? We, I, missed, I missed the fish, the minnow okay. stayed on. I had a couple of fish coming up. Now you got a lot of that hook covered with the head on that minnow. Right. So uh, I, I, I hooked it basically like I always do. Okay. So That's we'll, see, we how that, we'll yeah. see how that works. So we got an equal comparison. We have some fish coming up, there's the hit. 
We got them on so far. There's still a couple fish down there. I'm looking at them. There's a nice one. There's a nice fish on a barbless hook. Now show how there that fish comes right that that hook comes right out of that yeah, fish. Right. Watch this. You probably have to just I don't just boom. They just didn't have to do <laughs> nothing. nothing to it. It's effortlessly. And they could actually have that down a little farther and they'd still come out. Yes, it's easily. Right, right. Let's uh, try another one. Okay. Get Let's a fresh that. minnow on here. And uh, I see the wind is coming out, out here a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I can feel it. Uh, well, what a nice little uh, outfit you got here to stay out of the wind. Right. Uh, and, and you also got a heater if you need it. Yes, I have a heater in there. I, I won't need it today. Need it but, today uh, but boy. If you can stay out of the wind, isn't that 90%? Oh, here? I noticed. And, you know, a lot of younger guys can probably sit out in the ice, but older, yeah. like older? we are, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have a back there. And Okay, I'm all baited up here. We're okay. going to go back down with a whole minnow, hook through the mouth, out through the head. And as he'll be coming into view on the screen here in a second now. There he's coming down. Okay. There he is. Okay, yep. he's about halfway. Halfway. Three quarters. Here Nothing they come. Up yet. Here they oh, come. there they are. Yep. Here, whoop. I'll give him a little second here. There we go. He's on there. As long as you keep a little tension on, I gotta believe barbless would be a way to go. Just as good. Yep. Well, isn't that all the fishing though? It's keeping tension on the whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people haven't figured that out yet. But no, it's it's, uh, uh, it's a big it's, it's, it's a big thing. That's why you see a lot of these guys going like this way up. Yeah. Yeah, with a big long rod, but they're, what they're trying to keep tension on. They can't keep up with the reeling. I know the tendency, uh, I watch a few videos on TV, fishing, ice fishing videos, and they're going to longer rods, maybe another yeah. six, ten inches longer than this. Uh, oh, for ice fishing. Yeah, yeah, and most of them have like a spring bobber on. This has got a spring bobber built right in. What does the spring bobber do for you? Well, it. I'll show you right now. Okay, I'm down there about three quarters of the way. Let me go down a little further. Now watch the spring bobber here. There's some fish coming now. Oh, sure. See, now without that on there, you might not detect a bite on a thicker tipped rod. Sure. But with that on there. This real light spring on there. Yeah. Doesn't affect your pulling the fish out. No, anymore. because once it, once it tightens up, you're mm -hmm. pulling on your regular eyes on your rod. Now, are you losing a few fish there when you did that? Or? Well, I let it go there playing with the spring bobber. He might have got my minnow. I, no, nope. oh, I just lost them that just lost time. Lost one. Yeah. Okay, but that that could have been. No, oh, that's that's pretty normal. I mean, you don't okay. get them all. Let's try one more. Okay, one more. We'll go down there for them. Get a fresh one here. These minnows are a little bit on the big side. They are, they I, pre big. I I prefer a little bit smaller for crappies and perch. I tried uh, a whole minnow earlier through the dorsal fin and. Uh, they were a little reluctant to take it, but hooking it through the mouth and yeah. out the head. That's usually what they hit first, isn't it? Seems like it. Yeah, they go after that. Yeah, I've watched. Oh, the front of the. Yep, yeah. they like the front. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, okay, now there, okay, I'm there watching. I'm learning how to read down. your thing here. Now there they are. Okay. Now there's the, there's the minnow. We're, no fish coming up yet, right? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Maybe Mr. Pike has moved in. Okay, here oh, comes, there's, a, there's here comes one. Yeah. It shouldn't take long now. They went back down. There's something they didn't like there. I'll go down a little bit farther. I'm still up a ways. There, one just took it, I think. There we go. There you go. I can see the... Oh, I missed that one. Missed that one? Yeah. Okay. Did he get the minnow? I don't think so. No, no okay. still on. We'll give her one. So more. he didn't take the minnow off of that barbless. No, he didn't. That was Which just is a, interesting because you would think that there'd be a better chance of getting that minnow. Off you would there. think, but evidently but, he uh, he just had, didn't so, have a good grip on it. He probably just had part of it. It's always nice to have a little challenge with these fish. Try oh, something yeah. a little different. Yeah, you want to be out here more than ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now one more one more fish here, and then we'll. There she there got she one is. going here. Let's see. Take her down here. Got a couple looking at it right now. What you see is a little bigger minnow. Sometimes they right, right. look at it a little longer. Right. 
This is quite an aggressive bite here. Uh, I, I fished other places and was able to watch the fish. Mm -hmm. You get, sometimes perch can get fussy too. They'll come in and they Very might not. Yep. And who knows what causes that? Yeah, I don't Nobody's know. Nobody's figured that out yet. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. There's something we don't know that they know. Yeah. Okay, well, hey, you caught a couple on there, and that's what we're after. Right, right. We're going to go over to Larry real quick now. He's going to try a treble hook that's okay. pitched off. Okay. And then it'll, it'll, we'll uh, end it with that. So, okay, sounds great. Okay, thank, thank you. Tom. you. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, you know, Larry, you just mentioned, and we're back with Larry here, um, that you just caught about, I don't know, 10, 14 fish with out any bait on the lure. Correct. Well, you know, that's getting out of control there. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it just shows you that they're very aggressive this time of year. We keep, we keep emphasizing, uh, this, this show is going to be called uh, Early Ice Perch. Early Ice Perch. And that's what we're doing right now. Early ice, not a lot of ice, and they're very aggressive. We could come out here in February and March and it wouldn't be like this at all. No. It never has been. No. So this is the time. Okay, now we're gonna get Larry with a treble hook on a lure. Rich had a single hook, and we're gonna pinch off the- All the barbs. All the barbs. I'm gonna squeeze them in tight. You can do that with a Leatherman tool, very easy. And actually, this was a good lure to do it on because this particular lure <laughs> didn't have much left for barbs. Okay. <laughs> well, the barbs are awful small on those compared to a northern hook, you know. Which right. You can look. But anyway, okay, it's all pinched off. You're not gonna, if you get that in your skin, it should come right out. No barbs. I'd prefer not to, yeah. but. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to use any bait on this? No. You aren't going to use any bait. You're no. just going to jig it? I'm just going to drop it down there and wiggle it a little bit. And I've already got some fish coming up to look at it. Okay, now, it, there should be a reduction in the number of fish you catch with uh, no barb, but that's not necessarily true. It's small. That is one small fish. But that proves that it doesn't take, <laughs> uh, I mean, you can use almost any size lure. You could use some of the bigger lures that I had on this box here yes. and probably do just as good. Okay, now, that was without anything no attached bait. to the hook. Oh, that's that one. Okay. So they are aggressive. Okay. They are aggressive. This one feels a little bit nicer than the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. Now, when you take that out of there, now he's got that down there pretty good. Yeah. Now that should come out a lot easier without the... Absolutely, if I can get him to open his mouth. Should just pretty well come out of there. I still got to reach down though to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's it. I think we're done. We proved that we can do it. Yes. Without barbs. I do, I do believe the reason that I don't need bait is this little flipper tail. Oh, that, yeah. It's on the end here. And boy, there are more lures. Again, we'll show that one more time. And this is only uh, probably 1% of what you can get <laughs> to fish perch and panfish. So if you're going into the store looking for bait, you won't have any problem having variety. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's another one. Thank you, Larry. One more coming up. Yep. All right. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed a little fishing out here on uh, early panfish, early perch fishing, and uh, it just shows you that you can enjoy this time of year, even with a little bit of ice, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the show, and see you next time.